In this quick demo, we're going to be looking at Camus, a new generation data management tool based on Open Data Fabric protocol. So I already have the tool installed on my laptop. Uh, so the first thing you usually do is create a new workspace. And as you can see, our workspace is currently empty. So we'll change that. Uh, using Camus add, I'm going to add two data set definitions that I prepared up front. The data that we're going to be using uh, comes from Hong Kong and Philippines uh, open data portals and contains disaggregated uh, data about COVID-19 cases in those countries. So data set definition in Camus is just a YAML file. Um, as you can see here, we're adding a data set uh, with a kind root. So there are two kinds of data sets, uh, root and derivative ones. Uh, the root data set contains data ingested from some external system. So this is what we're doing here. We're reaching out over HTTPS. We're going to be downloading a CSV file hosted on the open data portal of Hong Kong. We're going to parse it as CSV. And I also have a few rules defined here uh, for transforming the data using SQL into a more manageable and easily usable schema. So let's do this. Uh, as you can see, both of the data sets are currently empty. So I'm going to be using Camille pool dash dash all command to ingest them. And this is the uh, time where the tool is actually going to reach out to the open data portal. So those countries, it's going to download the data and it's going to read the data with the rules that we just specified. So you can see here that the processing for the Hong Kong data just finished and the new block was committed. Uh, so this is first interesting feature of Canoe is that doesn't actually sync the data uh, blindly, uh, but rather uh, it tries to store the complete history of what happened to the data. So if you ever used Git, you will be very familiar with this concept. So if we look at the log of the data set here, you can see that Hong Kong data set is, consists of two blocks. The first block is when we created it, and it contains the URL and all the SQL code that we are using for processing the data. The second block was created when we were pooling the data, and it contains the hash of the data and how many rows were ingested, etc. So if we do Camus pool uh, again on this data set, the tool is actually going to go reach out and check whether there were any updates to the data set. And uh, if there were any updates, it would ingest only the difference between the previous and the current state. So as you can see here, uh, both of our data sets now contain some records. And this is where we could jump in and use built-in SQL shell to start exploring the data. But let's say I'm a COVID-19 researcher and uh, I don't really want to be constantly switching from one data set uh, or data set of one country to another. I would really rather analyze the global data uh, inside of a one data set. So this is the type of data set we're going to create now. I'm calling it my COVID-19 federated. And you can see here that this is a derivative data set. So what derivative data sets in Camus are is that unlike root data sets, they're not allowed to ingest any external data. They can only build on top of data that is already in the system. So they can transform it, enrich it, and combine it in any imaginable way. Uh, so we're using the two data sets we created previously, and uh, we're defining another SQL transformation to combine the rows of these data sets together. So it's pretty basic SQL uh, with two select statements and a union all in between the two. So I'm going to do Camus pool uh, on this new data set and let the tool apply the derivative transformations. A really important and uh, super differentiating feature of Camus is that all of these transformations are actually streaming in nature. They're not batch SQL that you're probably most used to. Uh, I'm not going to be able to go into the theory of this uh, in this video. Uh, but what it means for you as a user, it lets uh, you define these transformation once and then repeat them at any point in time uh, with no extra work. And the tool is going to guarantee that all the computations are done correctly, whether the data, uh, wh whenever the data that you're using uh, has been refreshed. So for example, uh, uh, so the data set was pooled and now it contains 12,000 records as expected from combining the two. But what I could do is uh, I could say Camus pool one uh, on this data set once more and specify the recursive flag. 
uh, and what the tool is going to do is uh, it's going to resolve all the dependencies of the federated data set and go down the graph and start at the leaf nodes which are our root, root data sets and it's going to try to update this entire chain uh, since both of these data sets are up to date the federated data set is up to date as well so we get the three data sets up to date uh, message in the result but thanks to these three mean transformation nature Tomorrow, when this uh, Hong Kong and Philippine data sets are uh, going to be updated, I can rerun this pool statement and basically get all the latest and freshest data into my uh, data science project in a matter of seconds. So now that we prepared the data, let's finally explore it. I'm going to be using Camus notebook feature uh, and basically ask the tool to start a Jupyter server for us. And it's going to open Jupyter in my browser. And I'm going to use the notebook that I prepared for us. Uh, it's a pretty simple one. So we're uh, importing the Camus extension and importing in the data set that we uh, just seen, uh, giving it the LAS COVID. So what this line is going to do is it's going to start uh, a session in Apache Spark for us. So we have a Apache Spark process running in the background and this uh, notebook is going to give us the full access to PySpark capabilities of that engine. So print schema here is uh, an example of us using the PySpark API. Uh, but I prefer to stay in SQL so we can do that as well and I'm going to just select uh, 10 samples out of this data set. And you can see here a very nicely formatted data frame. Let's do some basic analytics. Uh, so here, for example, I'm gonna be uh, aggregating the COVID-19 cases by gender, and let's see what happens. So we got some results, but we can also view it in a diagram. So I'm gonna switch to pie chart. So yeah, we can see a roughly equal split. So COVID at least does not discriminate. And here's another query aggregating the COVID-19 cases by the age group, uh, bucketing them up by uh, with a step of 10. And we can use a bar chart for that. So yeah, uh, we have a pretty interesting looking distribution. So I hope I was able to show you how Camus can be useful in your data science projects, that you can use it to manage uh, dozens of data sets at once and uh, keep them all up to date. But it's not only about local convenience. Uh, Camus was primarily designed uh, with data collaboration in mind. So all of the data sets that we see here can actually be very easily shared with other people, allowing them to uh, reuse the work that we've done and skip all the data preparation steps, uh, speeding up their data science projects uh, by the order of magnitude. Uh, but it's not only about the speed when it comes to collaboration. When you download the data from someone else, you want to be fully sure that you can trust this data. Uh, you want to be certain that the data was not maliciously or accidentally altered. Uh, so this is where Camus can help as well, because it ensures the full reproducibility and verifiability of the data science workflows. So whenever you download the data from someone else, you can simply audit all the transformations that they declared in the metadata and instruct Camus to verify that uh, all of these transformations uh, were in fact performed and the data matches the expected the result. So similarly to tools like Git that creates an environment of uh, verifiable trust and we're hoping that this will allow us to collaborate on data on a similar scale as we currently see in software. So I hope this was interesting for you uh, and I'll see you later.